Hey guys, so today we're gonna do an experiment that's really easy at home and it can kind of lead into an art project. And it has all to do with water. Now, in a previous video, um, I talked about how water sticks together really well. It has very strong intermolecular forces, which means that individual molecules of water stick together really well. This is why water takes a really long time to evaporate. It's why it takes such a long time for something that's only made of hydrogen and oxygen. It takes a really long time to come to a boil. This all has to do with the fact that the molecules stick together really well. So for example, when you spill water on the counter, if you just let it left it there to air dry, it would take quite a while. Whereas if you spilled something like nail polish remover or alcohol or gasoline, it evaporates really quickly because those molecules don't stick together as well. So a property that has to do with the strong intermolecular forces of water or the stick togetherness is this thing called capillary action. So capillary action is to describe it simply, is how water will sort of stick to the sides of a container and kind of creep its way up the container. This is how plants are able to suck water out of the ground. Um, if you've ever looked, um, like taken a measurement in a graduated cylinder, you know the formation of the meniscus is like that curved um, area inside of the graduated, graduated cylinder. So the water is sort of grabbing onto the sides that's capillary action as well. This is how anything is able to absorb any kind of water. Like this is the way that diapers work and so forth. And so this thing that I'm gonna show you today is called, uh, it's a very simple thing that you can do at home called chromatography. And what chromatography does is it uses capillary action to pull um, some sort of a solvent up against gravity into an absorb, uh, like a material that will absorb. So. For this particular experiment, all I did was I took a coffee filter and I cut it into strips. So what I've got here is I took a, um, just had a little cup of water here and I'm gonna show you, I actually took one slip of um, coffee filter and kind of just bent it over this one stick. I took on this side, that is magic marker. And what I did was, I'm a coffee filter, I just made a big block of um, black magic marker down here. So what's cool about this is the water gets pulled up the paper against gravity. And what it then does is it separates this mixture. So black is a mixture of colors. It separates the black marker into all of the different colors that are in black. And so this goes by weight or density. So the particles that weigh less will travel further up the paper and the ones that are heavier will stay lower down. So you can see here that at the bottom, there's some red. So red would be like a heavier pigment. And then these shades of greenish blue up here must be lighter. So again, this was just a big block of black marker and I drew it, I, I colored it in all the way down here when I initially did it and I let it set in the water, and again, the water absorbed and separated it into those different pigments. On this side, I had purple. So you can see again, red is on the bottom, and this must be like the blue, because obviously purple is made of red and blue. The red is on the bottom, the blue pigments are on the top, similar to this side. So red dye must be heavier than blue or green dyes. And again, all I did was I took a strip of of coffee filter and I made a big color block of purple here and a big color block of black here. And I just took a cup with some water in the bottom and I had this, this is like a, I don't know, like a shish kebab wooden dowel or something. And I just draped it over on so that either side could just dip down slightly into the water and it did that. Now there's a couple of different things that you can do here that are pretty cool. So. Those are um, water soluble markers, obviously. That's why that was able to work. If you did this with like a Sharpie, it, it wouldn't work as well with water. You might wanna use um, alcohol or like nail polish remover or something if you can like stand the smell. Just in, again, you just need a tiny little bit in the bottom and see if it would do the same thing if it were a permanent marker. You could try it with water, but it, it wouldn't work as well as just with regular Crayola markers. Another really cool thing that you can do is you can get some leaves or grass or flowers. And if you 
um, crush those up and kind of mash them up with rubbing alcohol and put the leaf alcohol mixture in the bottom or the flower alcohol mixture in the bottom. And you just put plain, like one strip of just plain coffee filter in here like this. It'll separate the different pigments that are in. So say in a leaf, say it's a green leaf. Leaves obviously have chlorophyll in them, which, which are, have the green chloroplasts or the chloroplasts have the green chlorophyll in it. So you would see like different shades of green and maybe even some yellow from these pigments that are called xanthophylls that might show themselves in there. So you could see all of the different pigments in a leaf or all of the different pigments in a flower, but a better solvent for that is rubbing alcohol instead of water. Now, as far as an art project goes, um, Boone actually did one of these um, with his kindergarten teacher at their STEM night. So I'm just gonna show you the outcome. So here's what it will look like in the end. Boone's has a snowman on it, but you can see that it's kind of a, like got a stained glass window look to it. Um, you could certainly do it with like rainbow colors if you wanted to hang one in your window for the 518 rainbow project, whatever you wanna do. Um, so the way that this works is you take a coffee filter and lie it flat and you take, you know, regular Crayola magic markers and you really want to color in nice dense patches of color on here. Um, don't leave any white. When you're done with that, you take just, you know, a spray water bottle and really douse this thing, like spray it all around and just give it a couple of minutes to let the colors sort of bleed together. Um, you, you probably want to do this on like a plastic plate or a glass plate or something like that. Don't do it right on the counter because the, the um, marker will come through and you'll just have to wipe that up. And then you can either let it air dry or like um, Boone's kindergarten teacher did. She actually took a hair dryer and just dried it right out and until it was bone dry. And then Boone um, was able to glue the snowman on there. So you could put any anything on top of that that you wanted to. So again, a little bit of science, a little bit of art. Um, I hope you guys enjoy that. And as always, I would love to see pictures or videos of you uh, doing this experiment and enjoying it. Take care.